there yeah. are good men in Singapore. There are men who sort of respect women and they know that there must be equal opportunities, but there aren't enough. Mm. Is what I'm saying. Mm. Like, I think that there needs to be a shift in mindset so that guys go, okay, my wife uh, wants to have a career. This is my career. We got to sit down and see how we can have a baby. Uh, but then you see, in, uh, even organizations need to change, right? You know, there, there aren't even uh, enough female bosses. How many women are there in parliament now? We need to set set example, right? How many mm. are there? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Ba, 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 ba. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with some very interesting people, all with a touch of what? I forgot to brief you about this, but you can just say right after me, uh, good old humor. Okay. So I'll try that again. Okay. We're not going to edit this up. Okay. Okay. Where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what? Go, old gold, good old humor. <laughs> Hell. Good old humor. Good yeah, old okay, humor. Okay, Good old humor. Okay, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Cool. So if you're listening, you will realize that that's not that, that's not Terence's voice. Uh, because across me today, we have a very special guest while Terence is away. It's none other than Sharul Chana. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, you know, stand-up comedian, actress, writer, director. Yeah, just produce myself. Everything. I just do everything produce by myself. Yourself. Yes. Yeah. No, and it's actually quite cool because you and Rishi were, I think, our third guest on the first iteration of our podcast. Which yeah. had a way shittier name. It was called the Moth Shroom. You remember? Oh, was it? No, I don't remember anything about your podcast. Thanks. Uh, it was in this room. Like uh, we'll put a link to the episode that uh, Sharul and Rishi came on, which she conveniently forgot. Yeah. But yeah, that was like three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Come on. Before COVID, whatever happened before COVID, you don't remember. Ah, uh, yes. No, yes. I do. I do. I do remember everything. Yeah. I yeah. choose not to like. <laughs> So there's there's pre COVID pre COVID uh, Sharul and post COVID. Yeah, Charul, it's like before before Christ. Uh, yeah, after exactly. Christ. Yeah, yeah, that's what. So now it's BS and PS, <laughs> AS, AS. Yeah, BS and AS. Yeah. Cool, but what's new with you, Sharul? Oh well, um, I'm doing. <laughs> 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 you really want to know? <laughs> yeah, of course. Lah. Okay, lah, so I'm doing a show uh, this week. It's mm. called uh, Middle Child by Sharul Chana because, of course, it's me. I don't know why I, I, I wrote it that way, but mm. it's happening at the Drama Center Black Box and uh, it's a new comedy special. Mm. Just keep performing. Just keep performing. And like, what was new with this special? Uh, well, it's, it's talking about me being a middle child mm. and how I view the world as a middle child and, and how the way I see things are different because I'm a second kid and the way I was t- treated was very different because mm. my parents were at that certain age where they were also growing up mm. so they didn't give much shit about me. <laughs> oh, so they were young, younger parents? No, so they were like, you know, they were hustling parents. Uh, so they're okay, like, yeah. alright, the first one was really special because the first kid and then the second kid happened and they're like, ah, alright, we can just leave the kid with. Mm-hmm. The There's auntie. a middle child, typical middle child syndrome. Like. 100%. 100%. I think that's why I'm, uh, I'm like that. Oh, that's why you're like, <laughs> blame your parents. Just blame your parents <laughs> when shit goes down. But then if you're successful, just praise yourself. La. Yeah, exactly. It's all because of you. Yeah. So how long How long is the show? One hour, 10 minutes. One hour. And you're doing for how many days? I'm doing seven shows. Seven shows. Yeah. Wow. And how different is it going to be from your previous shows? Because I've been to some of your previous shows. Yeah. How different is this going to be? Well, it's actually, it's just new jokes put together and, and then string together. I'm just going to start off saying that I'm a middle child and this is my 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 view. Mm-hmm. But it's just jokes. It's just jokes. You know, well. comedians are like, we always have to give a new name to something, but it's actually just our observations and and the new things we've discovered and we just pack it up in an hour, 15 minutes. There's no like, like I'm going to give some wisdom or whatever shit. No, nothing like oh, that. It? Just, it's just come and laugh and then just... The wisdom is only for Instagram and TikTok. Yes. Ah, you need okay. to do that because then, you know, people buy into that shit. <laughs> Then Any, they come for your shows. The, exactly. Like anything with the slow music at the back, like, yeah. and then yeah. you give the like, you know, some people even cry on Instagram for the same reason, you know, you know, the ones that cry and they're like, I was like that. And then yeah. I became like that yeah. and never give up, you know? Yeah. yeah. Correct, correct, correct. I mean, it's a thing. Uh. Like yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a thing. thing. Oh, cool. So, so if people, I mean, like, uh, we can go into more like the links to the show and all, we keep it in the show notes. Yeah. Uh, but you are also here yeah. to, because we need to stick to the regular programming, Sharon. What is your regular programming? Talk about news lah. Oh, okay. Yeah, talk about news. Okay. Do you talk about news a lot? Well, I do. I always look out for news because um, Singapore news actually is like, uh, like I was in India recently and Indian news is so interesting. There's something mm. or the other keeps happening. Like, like what? Like someone's what, what car got stolen, mm. you know, um, things like there was a flood. Or they install new CCTV camera, the CCTV camera got stolen. Oh, is it? Yeah, like things like that happen all the time, right? Yeah. Like a man who got um 
who went back to kill someone who had um, who had betrayed him, found mm. out that he was really dead. So he dug up his grave and took his head and left. You know, stuff like that. Is it? India news is amazing. People get oh. beaten up in parliament. Like, just look at us. I mean, us, we just have Indian ministers getting into trouble. Yeah. That's true. La. Yeah, all of them are Indian. <laughs> But only like one of them. I mean, the first story we have today does concern one of them, lah. Specifically, oh, is it? Yeah, uh, yeah. You you read the news that I sent you beforehand, right? I, I yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah la, bye, 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 bye. <laughs> So we can just jump straight into it. Go for it. Yeah, cool. So the the first topic we're talking about. I mean, it's a it is a serious topic. It is a developing topic. Uh, and I know this one, you also have a lot of thoughts mm. about, about this discussion, right? Yeah. Uh, and this was published on March 29th, which was uh, two days ago. Yeah. And it's something to do with the MHA clarifying that the proposal to give police more power to apprehend mentally ill suspects um, is has caused some 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 uh, some kerfuffles. Uh. Mm. But what, what, how how aware were you of this? Uh, were you keeping track of like what was mentioned in the past few weeks about this? I was uh, keeping track enough to see if there were any jokes in it. Mm. Um, and then, you know, I read it and I said, okay. Um, well, you know, I, I have my thoughts on it. Lah, you ah. know, um, I have seen some people who are mentally um, ill. I don't know if there's a more vogue way to say it or mentally unstable. Mm. And they have been with a samurai sword or they have been sitting at the ledge, uh, you know, wanting to jump down. Actually, I saw something... Uh, a year back, someone mm. just sitting, you know, uh, on an overhead bridge and about to jump down. And then I saw two men from the gym who sort of casually walked past and pulled her back. And uh-huh. then the police had to come. So I think that, I think they really need to clarify what they mean by they're going to, you know, sort of take charge and mm. arrest them. Because if, because, you know, I think that mental health is something that you need to be very sensitive about. But at the yeah. same time, depending on how, like, I know there's a lady in Ishun screaming, the screaming Ishun lady. Was it screaming Ishun? Uh, there was one lady who was just screaming out the window and people don't know what to do about it. I think there's probably been more than one instance. Ishun, like, I think it's just Ishun. Ishun yeah. You sure? I think Ishun is just the area. <laughs> I can Google it if you want. Sure. Screaming lady. Screaming lady. Yes, there's a screaming lady somewhere and mm. people were making like a lot of noise about her. Because mm. she was screaming and making noise. Uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, just like while you Google it, yeah. for people listening, the, the context of this, right? Uh, I mean, at first, I, I had to reread this a couple of times to kind of... Tampanese, I'm so sorry. Oh, I can't blame everything on Ishun, right? It's Tampanese. It's Tampanese. It's your area. Yeah, where I grew up. Yeah. What? Your, I think after you left, she got heartbroken. Yeah. <laughs> She's like... Ah! But did they, did they find out like what, what the issue was? Nothing. She just disrupts neighbours. Uh, Resident of Block 405. Uh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When was that? Uh, well, this news came out this year itself, I think. Mm. Uh, I'm if your internet was was good enough, I would have told you earlier. Mm. But then now that it's yeah, it's taking some time. But it's a yeah, it's in Tampines, mm. and she shrieks, huh? she shrieks. Street forty one, block four o five, Tampines Street. Mm. Yeah, she's screaming away. I, I don't. But know what was the outcome of that? that Nothing. That thing. That's the thing about Singapore news, right? They'll just tell you something is happening, then they will give like version one, two, three, four of the outcome. Nothing happened, I think. Mm. Yeah. Because. Like part of like why this uh the this topic uh, about this new kind of like um bill that is being passed is because I mean there there's this whole debate about what people should do in the event of uh, a certain somebody exhibiting uh like 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 certain symptoms or signs la. so so basically um well right now the the bill that is being tabled is to essentially give the police. Uh, more power to apprehend mentally ill suspects. Mm. Uh, and the whole backstory behind this, I mean, this is still set to be debated, I think, in a couple, in a week's time in Parliament. Uh, but there was a case last in 2017, uh, which was concluded in 2023, where there was a guy who was apprehended by two police officers. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, on, on the pretext that he was mentally ill and potentially dangerous to this four-year-old child, yeah. So the mother of the child reported him and these two police officers apprehended him uh, and he was uh, uh, taken into custody. He was handcuffed and he was sent to IMH but he was discharged a few days later. Mm. So after the whole investigations came out, uh, it seemed like he was unfairly arrested. Okay. Yeah, because the, the doctors kind of said he has no mental is- mental health issues. Uh, so he, in the end, won the case because he su- he he took up a case against them and he was awarded, I think, twenty k in damages. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that that was announced last year in January. So basically, that whole case said that okay, uh, these police officers 
who were acting with the understanding that he might cause some harm were yeah. wrong lah because he didn't actually cause any harm and he was awarded 20k so even last the, a few weeks later shamugam himself said the mha is going to relook into that outcome because it might set a dangerous precedent lah yeah where police officers who in the moment need to make a decision whether or not someone is dangerous uh might not be able to lah for fear of kind of losing having a case taken up against them right So this one will make it a lot more clear that police officers even though no harm has been done hmm. if someone who is showing signs of mental illness they can apprehend the person. You know I honestly think that uh with due respect to the the, the police in Singapore yeah. I really think that in they need more training mm. in empathy mm. and also on how to deal with cases case by case. Why why you say that? Because um I think that uh you know you can't I I just think that they, these are young young men mm. who are police officers right they are NSF they just graduated I don't know I really There's don't women also right women or men like uh, both uh. I just think that they the way they they deal with cases sometimes can be way better than they're dealing with it now mm. having said that uh, I think that like it this happened to me uh, last year early last year where this uh, gentleman that is from the Indian community he he wrote about me on Facebook mm. and he tagged my family mm. my dad my sister and wrote a lot of things which were you know uh not true lah mm. and and almost giving me a warning about something mm. and uh, this guy also had pictures of swords and and you know some on his profile on his profile uh-huh. so i went down to the police station and i said listen you need to do something about this because if this guy goes off then we you have a problem because he has a police record and i know this oh, he be- had a police yeah, record yeah yeah because he had cut someone's ear off or something at some i had heard of that and uh. and he was he's dangerous lah he was uh. dangerous um and so the police uh, did you know interview him and i really appreciated that mm. because and I, and i kept telling them i say you need to do it you need you need him to back off because uh people like this they will go off and mental health issues are huge now and they're increasing in singapore so i think that yes they need the police officers need to have training on how to deal with mental health patients mm. and also then making a decision on the spot using empathy as to how to deal with it right mm. because um people are going off mm-hmm. they are going off and we are having a lot of, especially after covid uh people who didn't have access to therapy or counseling yeah uh so that's why things are happening and that's why i think the police should be given some power with with uh, with so it means like like you are you kind of like uh, how you say Not to say you are against this bill. No, I'm not against it. Oh, I think that I, I am not against it. I think mm. that it's also how you do it. Mm. You can't just like, um, you, you know, if they're if they are obviously ha- if they have a knife in their hand and they are going to cause some damage to themselves or someone else around the area, you should taser them a bit mm. and just. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to say it with happiness in my, uh, on my yeah, face. Yeah. What I'm going to say is, you need to taser, calm them down, or find a way to calm these people down, shock them yeah. into stopping because it can be harmful. But then, that's assuming they get the training, lah. Yeah. So I think the police needs to be trained. Yeah. You can't. It can't just be like you. They can't just be given power and then these people just make any decision to to knock someone down. Mm, oh, so you're saying that this bill there needs to be something part of it that every officer gets training. Lah. Yes, they have to be trained. Ah. Yeah. I think every officer needs to have training in how to deal with uh you know mental health patients, and uh if someone has been sexually assaulted, mm. both are very important. But then, do you think that just because you receive training, you can actually execute? Uh. I think it's a start. Mm. Once you receive training, it'll be in your head like, okay, this is something that's new that's come What up. What was the last training you received? Uh, the last training I received. Ah. Uh, I was thinking, what was the last training I received? Ah, yeah. Uh, the last training I received. No Skillshare or anything. Uh. I cannot do Skills any. Skillshare, of... no Skillshare. I future. never, I never, I cannot. Oh, no. I learned pole dancing. Was oh, it? Yes. <laughs> so in the event, like you know, like life or death situation. If there's a tsunami in Singapore, I will climb that traffic light. Oh <laughs> yes, I will climb, and all everybody who had a driving license because I don't have one, they all will die. Oh, I but see. I'll be on that pole saving because, myself. But like, if you had to do a, a, a like decision, this pole or the other pole? Yes. To climb up. Yeah. You feel your training. You, you'll be able to lah. Nearest pole lah. I mean, you see that you have to use your brains. Yeah. So, but then, like, do you think we should just let it be up to people's discretion? I, I no cannot. Yeah. I don't think you can leave the police by themselves to make this decision. They have to be trained in yeah. dealing with, or there must be someone who comes down to 
you know, in each in each uh, um, station, you need to have a specific person who's been trained in this, and that person gets sent down. Mm. Because you can't deal with me- uh, mentally ill patients uh, the same way you deal with like criminals. Yeah, you see, you can't push them down. I mean, you have to see, assess that. Okay, there's a knife in his hand or yeah. her hand. Is she just someone who's wearing an outfit, a bunny outfit, and standing around? Mm. Or is it, you know, or is it a psycho person who jump into a a fountain and watch it? Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. That could just be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, then I think th- that's exactly what this thing wants to protect. Can we put the link to that video? Yeah, yeah. Okay, when you again. did that, Harish. Yeah, twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Our my my coming out show. My coming out show. <laughs> yeah. uh, my break my breakout breakout video. I saw so, that and I was so excited. Yeah, that was yeah that was ten years ago. Yes. Oh shit! Ten years back, you jump into a fountain and orchard. Yeah, and look where we are now. Exactly. Yeah, sitting opposite people like you, people like Minister Shan. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Please don't put me in the same bracket <laughs> as Mr. Shamugam. I don't even know. <laughs> no, but I'm not aggressive. I mean, I mean, I would. Yeah, I mean, bracket means no, sir. You're a respected man. That's why I said that. It's not like I don't want to be in the same bracket as you. Yeah, but I mean, even in, in this this case, right? I think what they're trying to protect against is. If you, let's say you need someone to, to send down who is adequately trained in all these cases, then it becomes a resource thing, right? Yeah. So then like, uh, so I mean, this one is still going to be debated in parliament. Yeah. Uh, but I mean. But it's becoming difficult only because I've experienced it. I wouldn't have otherwise sort of said anything about it. Mm. I've seen people, I've seen that girl sitting off the ledge and it was on the ledge and it she was about to jump. Mm. And and if the if the if our gym instructor, the guy was in our gym would not have run across and just pulled her back she was going to jump mm. so that's when the ambulance came the police came to sort of calm her down mm. because in this situation it's about timing yeah you know they if if they are if anything kind of just t- they tip over then shit can go wrong but then do you think it should be which one is better because in the case in 2017 they arrested him first and then found that he was wrongfully arrested mm. and then uh, so it's almost like guilty unless proven innocent. Mm. Or are you a bigger fan of like innocent unless proven guilty? In the sense like if someone is is verbally saying... Did he have a knife someone, with him? Did, was he screaming? No, he was he no shouting? Knife. Then then they can't. You see, that's what I'm saying. There was lack no, of training. But that's exactly it. Now, if this bill is passed, yeah. technically the police could apprehend someone if they think that this person's a danger either to himself or someone else. Correct. So again, those those they, they need to have conditions there. No? It cannot mm. just be like, I mean, I some of some some Indian men just look dangerous. Not, not everybody can. <laughs> like if you were standing downstairs the block, yeah, Harish, you look dangerous. Yeah, so if you someone look... <laughs> came to apprehend me, that wouldn't be fair. Right? It wouldn't. Yeah. of course not. That's why it cannot just be like you look dangerous. It has to yeah. be. Was Harish holding a knife? Mm. No, okay. So you're talking about like conditions. Like conditions must be, like, yeah, must have conditions. So you know, even recently, this was something we were talking about just before the podcast. Yeah. Uh, about the case where. The, um, the the drag queen was yes. assaulted outside MBS. Yes. Right? And I think the the uh, uh, what what happened was there were this group of people who pushed her down. Yes, she hit called, her us, called, called yeah. uh, some slurs out like Papo. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. then the friend who helped her got beaten up also. Yes, right? yes. But those offences were classified as non-arrestable offences. Correct. Which is, again, uh, I think that's, I mean... Uh, as a as a uh, tax paying citizen, I would say mm. that's a terrible decision on mm. the police part because, you know, the mo- a you need to protect uh, you know uh, the marginalized community like drag queens yeah. in the country. You need to protect them, and b the moment someone touches you and hits you, they are already dangerous. But you see, it, in that case, why it's tricky? Because I also heard it. It's a non arrestable offense. I'm like, how the fuck is that not an arrestable offense? Yeah. Uh, but because there were conditions. Mm. And based on the conditions in like the statute and constitution mm. and the, the penal code, it is a non-arrestable offence. I don't understand why. Yeah. But that those were the conditions that were So, you know, maybe we've been following laws and rules that are now they've already, ex- you know, they don't work in today's time at mm. all. I think that they need to revise it, which mm. is why I think that, I mean, if, if they actually say that they protect uh, anybody, uh, you know, and I remember um, I watched Mr. Shamugam once at an AWARE's um, Oh, now Mr. Shamugam. Uh, yeah, I have to say Mr. Sh- <laughs> Mr. Shamugam. I really heard him speak at, I think oh, there was aware's, uh, there, there was an event and uh. he said that, you know, that the Singapore will protect any person who is male, uh, female, drag queen in terms of, I think he was talking about sexual ar- uh, harassment or assault. This is assault. So mm. if someone who is a, a drag queen, if it only stopped at being called a bapo, 
you can't do anything about that. But the moment you come back and you hit a person, mm. you need to arrest. And I think that they need to know better. Lah. They need to protect the marginalized communities in Singapore. Mm. So wrong. Lah. It's wrong. But if you was hit, uh, if someone from a non-marginalized community was hit, also wrong. You have to, oh, anybody who gets touched, unless yeah. they, it's a it's a family issue, it's a family matter. Mm. Like if I slap Rishi, which I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a family matter, it's different. Because then it gets tricky. Because yeah. we don't know what happened. Was someone provoked there? You are husband and wife. It's a very different case already. Mm. But in this case, it's a member of a public, you know, hitting another member of a public. They don't know each other. Cannot, huh? Cannot. Yeah. But I think... The, that was one of the reasons why, uh, I mean, there's a Today article also trying to explain why voluntarily causing hurt is not an arrestable offence, is uh, because the curs- the causes, the cases of hurt are too varied. So, so like, let's say you slap Rishi in public. Yeah. Right? Uh, and then... Rishi calls the police. Rishi calls the police. Yes. So, in that case... He'll call his mom first, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, the mom will come with the police. Yes. Right? Okay, okay. Can't but then they the won't police. arrest you because it's a non-arrestable offense. Which is wrong. You can't do that. You have to. If I do something like, if I, if I hit someone. you said family is tricky. Uh, husband, wife is tricky, but, but I think it's tricky. Father, son is okay. No lah. I think, okay, okay. Let me get it. I think husband, wife is tricky. Family matters are very different. Mm. But if it's two strangers, yeah. you can't, you can't. You have to arrest someone who touches another person. Mm. Uh, and I, I think there's no excuse with that. Like, because if you keep this, if you say this is non-arrestable, a lot of things are going to happen, you know? Mm. Like people will be like, oh, okay lah. You know, like people are going to go out and, and, uh, and attack uh, more people of the LGBTQ community. And that's very, that's not a good, yeah. good example to set. So, I mean, like, um, because it was a non-arrestable offence, uh, they, they can still take it up with the magistrate. Uh, but yeah, it did feel weird that it was classified as that. Because, I mean, other forms of causing hurt, uh, including voluntarily causing hurt, they're arrestable. So, um, fractures, dislocations, permanent disfigurement to the head or face or even death. Uh, when the hurt was caused after the offender intended to cause the hurt, uh, basically they had an intention to cause the hurt. Um, causing hurt with uh, dangerous weapons or means like knives, axes. So, yeah, it, it feels it's only in those instances that it's arrestable. Which I don't think is yeah, fair. Yeah, I never, I never knew that. It's Be- not fair. So, you think there's going to be like a, a rampage of people just non-arrestably offending people? I think so. People people oh. are, I think there are going to be people who are homophobic who mm. are going to read this and say, okay lah, next time I go lah, I go to Neil Road, find some of my, uh, some of these people and then, and it happens a lot. Mm. It's just that it doesn't get reported. Yeah. You know, and I think it's because you're scared. Mm. And so this is the time that if you have already repealed 377A, is that mm. what it is? Yeah, 377 yeah. That you need to protect these people. Uh. And mm. I think you should, You if this is the example you should set. Mm. And also like, elections are coming. Yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, you're saying marginalized communities and people who maybe uh, don't have as strong a voice, right? Yeah. So... In some way, people who suffer from mental illness, yes, like there, there isn't enough support structures right now, right? Yes. But if the bill that we were talking about gets passed, then isn't it more harmful to them? Because technically, uh, they are going to be treated like like criminals who yeah. who um uh commit more serious or more conventional crimes are treated, mm. and it's also more power to the police to apprehend them even when they are not actually causing harm. So I think. They need to be conditions to it because, you see, one of their faculties are, is not operating at a normal pace, mm. which is, which is, which does not make them normal. And, you know, we, I mean, we, we can't say that they're normally functioning. Mm. You know, they, they, they are not they're thinking. They're like someone who's sick. They're you're, sick. Yeah. Exactly. They're not thinking. You, know, you got a fever, your flu, and all that. You're not. I mean, it's not, more than a fever and flu. La. I mean, e- but like a very serious sickness. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. So, so, you know... Physical the, ailment, mental ailment, they're both kinds of like, your body's not operating 100%. But with like. mental ailment, the bigger problem is that your sense of reasoning goes out of the window, mm. right? And that is the problem because if you are not reasoning well or a, at a sound level, you can make decisions to harm people around you and yourself. Mm. So if that person is just screaming... Like for example, when I went to Australia... Um, I see some of of how uh, I see how some of the uh, Aboriginals get treated. Right, they're outside cold storage. They're just screaming. Mm. Okay, everybody ignores them. Till then, they're fine. But you know, when you see some of them breaking property, like you know, like 
a chair or a car, they get arrested. Mm. Because at that time, they're either they're drugged or they're not in control. And when someone is not in control, you and they cannot think for themselves. Same thing with drunk people. Huh? When people are drunk, they mm. do the, you know, so many cr crimes happen when people are drunk yeah, and around yeah. clubs, right? Yeah. Because they're not thinking, they're not sound in their brain. So mm. you need to you need to hold them down before they cause harm to themselves or someone else. Yeah. But if someone is just just sitting down and making guttural sounds mm. under the block, then you can't say anything. But that's why it's if it's discretionary. Yeah, it is. Seriously. Let's say like some police officers. I think because even in the case where the guy was awarded a twenty k, I think when they interviewed the uh, one of the police officers, yeah. he did say the guy was mumbling to himself, talking to himself. I'm like, if I walk down the street, half the time I'm mumbling to myself. Correct. All of us are. Yeah. All Especially of us. at the after after that's what I'm saying after COVID. Yeah. People, I see so many people mumbling to themselves. Yeah, but it might just be maybe they're on a phone. Maybe their Bluetooth uh, headbutt is like the kind that really goes in the ear. You cannot correct, see, right? Correct. So if the police officers actually can make the call to preemptively arrest people, yeah, then that's kind of dangerous. Right? Yeah, so in this case, I think it was not right. Mm. It was not right. But in other cases, I think that they should have conditions and if I think they should be allowed if someone is causing hurt to themselves or someone else. Mm. Because I think that there are medicines uh, uh, available for people to sort of keep their mind in balance, and sometimes people don't have access to that. Mm -hmm. Or they, or because we're an Asian society, there's so much of uh, stigma where people do not uh, access take you know take medicines to to sort of you know get better. Mm -hmm. So, so I think it's it's important to to have conditions, but if someone is causing hurt. But there's the thing, this one is about even if they're not causing hurt. Yeah, la. so that cannot. La. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you think this bill will be passed? I think uh, it will be passed, but I think they'll have conditions. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But, but if the bill is passed, that means the police officers can arrest even if the person is not causing hurt. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But so they need to have conditions. La. Mm. Yeah. No conditions, Asha. I need to have conditions. La. Life is just full of conditions. La. You cannot, it's not a straight line. You can't be like, you know, I mean, come on. I think in I think Singapore, we had so many bands and everything. We're such a, we're so boring. You think Singapore's boring? I think I'm happening. I uh. think that our environment is boring. I think Singaporeans are damn fun. Mm. I think Singaporeans are damn like, yeah, chill out. They want to have fun. Mm. But then when Singaporeans want to have fun, where do they go? Malaysia. Mm. Or Thailand. Why can't we have fun in our own country? So like, what, what's, you say like, Singaporeans are fun, but the Singapore... Like, everything is it. Okay, so mm. now, of course, vape is banned. Mm. Right? Then, there's so many bands. There's so many things you can't Shisha do. Also. Shisha is banned. Yeah. And then now you have like, extra cameras being put so they can catch criminals. Or like mm. speeding. I'm like, we are under so much surveillance. And then you say we have low crime. But low crime? Yeah. Does it mean? <laughs> no crime. Exactly. <laughs> Correct. But then you, uh. do I really need to be like, so we don't, next time we want to do a video, right? We don't invest in it. We just tell the police to give us the footage. We just stand and record our own podcast. Yeah, there, right? You can do it. You can do it. So, right. You say, can I please get like the camera from this, 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 this area? Yeah, you just have to record audio because you can have multi-cam. Multi-cam set up. Yeah, multi-cam set up. I just feel like, and then even my, my car has a camera to see the car in front. Yeah. I don't know what we are. But then, okay, so, you know, like, uh, as a guy and as a girl living in cities, there are differences, right? You know, when it comes to safety, you yeah. know, right? Yeah. How, because one good thing about Singapore is that it's generally safe, lah, right? Mm. Like, people who grew up abroad when they come to Singapore, by and large, a lot of them do like the country, yes. right? So, from your perspective, you know, you have traveled quite a bit. Do you see, like, uh, I mean, you have to admit that with all the cameras and all, right? Yeah. Things are safer, lah, right? Yeah, but you see it. The problem is that we have what we call like pe a lot of people are repressed sexually. Oh, wow. Okay. A lot of people. Because of the CCTVs? Because of our upbringing. Uh. We've, never been, we've never been encouraged to express ourselves sexually. sexually. Really. Uh. The, only, the only way that we, <laughs> it must lead to something and have children, okay? And I'll tell you, like, I really see this with a lot of people. Uh, they are uh. so repressed. Yeah. And I think that they, especially the men, Mm. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that they're just they're just so yeah they're very and it's coming out. You see all the cases that are coming out now in the in the in the news. Like what? Like you know, uh, the molest, sexual uh, assault, yeah, so, uh, molest, upskirt. I think an upskirt 
video guy. There's so many people who do upskirt video and you know it irritates the shit out of me when in the papers it's like, bet he was from NUS, bet he has a bright future. Okay lah, then why don't you introduce an upskirt video course in mm. NUS, yeah. put all of them there, maybe they're just filmmakers. Oh, no. Right? They just want they just want to make films. So, so it's behaviours like that that make you think like Singapore men are sexually repressed. La. I think they are. 100%. But like down the street, if you walk down, can you like point at a man and say that guy is like Okay, 70%? like uh, on last week, Friday, I sat in a grab. Mm. Okay? And mm. I sat in a grab and the grab driver, and I normally don't take grab. I prefer to take comfort cab because it's old taxi uncles who are very sweet, mostly. Mm. Grumpy, but you can still deal with them. Uh, uh. I sat in a grab and it was a 40-year-old Chinese guy. Mm. Okay? And he said... He's like, damn, you're hot. Mm. And then he went ahead. He said, I said, sorry. He's like, yeah, you're very hot. I, I see your birthday. Why are you dressed like this? Mm. And then he's like, and then he said, can I show you something? And I'm like, what is he about to show me? Mm. And then he unties his hair and he's like, look at my hair. I've got long hair. Mm. But I get attention because of my hair, not because I'm hot. And then he carries on. Mm. And I have to call my friend and I'm like, hey, this guy, and what's going on? And I tell my husband, and how many people should I report? How many mm. men can I report? I always report and call out people. Mm. So I feel like I was so shocked because I'm thinking, like, what made you think it was okay and appropriate to talk like this? Mm. So I feel like there is like a and, lot. And you don't get that in other countries. In other countries, um, I think that, yes, you can get that. But I think in Singapore, it's, a, it's scarier when it happens. Uh. Because in, say, for example, when I'm traveling in, um, in India, right? I normally have someone with me. And, and you know, it's now with safety, there is like this thing they can track you and they're mm. very careful. They don't want to get reported. I think Indian men in India, for the most part, especially who are drivers and all, they're scared mm. of like, you know, getting into trouble because this is their livelihood. You know, they have to feed their families. In Singapore, I've never seen this happen with the reports coming up, like so much. Like it's mm. been happening, but now it's just too much. Oh, and you think it's affecting like society in general? It is. Why is our birth rate low? Uh, but so only the men are sexually repressed, is it? I think because men are, women are too. La. But then women uh, are not going around touching bums. You know what I'm saying? They're not taking... When was the last time you saw a, a woman take an upskirt video? At most, they will, get, they will get upset and slap a few kids in the kindergarten, which they shouldn't. Uh, but like... <laughs> there's no woman like standing around naked going like you know but men you'll just see men like all these cases oh I mean don't you think like women are still kind of like going about their job like, I mean I, I I wouldn't say I can tell when someone's actually repressed or not I mean when these things come out of course yeah. they are la. I mean upskirt video when was the last time a woman took an upskirt but uh, you can't even up because you don't wear skirts <laughs> but <laughs> I mean yeah for a heterosexual woman like you won't take a for a man they don't often wear skirts right yeah, and like don't. pants are not conducive to uh, up pants kind of videos. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I mean, but women are not even like, you know. Yeah. They just want like. So how do you think we can fix it, Cheryl? I'll tell you how we can fix it. Yes. We need to have uh, a rule, uh -huh. like a national rule, which I'd like to suggest to Mr. Shamogam. Uh, yeah. We need to inaugurate World Masturbation Day. Oh, okay. Okay. And I think that all men and women should masturbate once a day. But in then, Singapore. Would you say World Masturbation Day or World Masturbation Hour? Uh, World Masturb Masturbation Day should be one day where oh. they inaugurate it. And then every day they should tell everybody to be sexually healthy by masturbating. Once a day. Let out. Let it out. And like at work, you can be, okay, uh, sorry boss. I there should to... be a special place that, okay, I got to go. It's my masturbation hour. <laughs> but mostly do it. Do it at home lah. Don't do it in the office. Uh, and don't do it on your colleague lah. Don't <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I'm saying I'm just saying just be like encourage people to to be sexually healthy by masturbating uh. every day oh yeah and log into your sing pass and then <laughs> <laughs> just log into your sing pass and then just say okay so you have a government controlled app to uh, show you like racy images or videos but it's all tracked la. absolutely yeah and then you know maybe the racy image could be like you get like it's just five dollar rebate on in NTUC, and then people get turned on. You don't know Singaporeans get Most turned CDC on. Voucher. Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean the racy image? The racy image could just be that, oh. or the racy image could be like, uh, you know, the racy image could be like a uh, how you say? See, uh, like the rebate lah, something rebate, like a rebate, P like a, like a, rebate like a yeah, five dollars off. Um, 
some voucher. Have you seen this be piloted anywhere else in the world? Absolutely not. I'm. I am. Have you tried this, it with like a small focus group of your friends or something? I myself need focus. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there because I'm telling them they need to go to schools and teach kids how to release themselves and uh-huh. let, be sexually healthy. So by the time they come to N2 NUS, you know. So what age do you think they should start? I think they should start once they hit puberty. Like after primary six, like sec, sec one to sec four, they should completely... Completely. <laughs> sec one to sec four, they should they should have like uh, just introduction. Teenagers. Yes, hundred percent. I I I don't I don't know why we don't have that in our country. Mm. Like we just, I mean the the the, the even our the, the lady who is uh in uh, who's the one talking about children and development. Uh, you mean like globally famous person? Or? No, no, Singapore. Our minister who is uh, women, uh minister of women and children or. I don't know whether there's a ministry for women and children. Someone who's talking about the fertility, right? Jotio, is it? No. Grace Wu. Yeah, but doesn't have kids. <laughs> Herself, I think. Indrani. Indrani. Indrani, uh-huh. yeah. Madam yeah. Indrani Raja doesn't have kids. <laughs> yeah. So she she's advocating this. Uh-huh. Put someone there who has four kids. Oh. Who can talk about it. I see, I see. You think I get arrested after this podcast <laughs> for voluntarily causing hurt to people's emotions? No, 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 no. I think it, it sounds like you have Singapore's best interest at heart. La. I have Singapore's breast interest at heart. That's yeah, what you breast. should call it. See, that's something that only you can say. I cannot say that. Yes, I can. Yeah. Right. No, but I, I really think Singaporeans need that. They need to be relaxed and released. So before parliament, like everybody does a... If the parliament wants to. Because it's a very high stress scenario, right? It is. I think everybody should. Before surgeries, uh doctors ep- flights take off. And once all. once a day everybody should masturbate. That's your regardless of race, language. religion, <laughs> language, gender. Uh. And So that is your like one if your suggestion to improve Singapore, that would be it. La. That would that be, would be one mean. of the suggestions. One of the suggestions. They should do that. I mean, it's because the second story is also involves someone who I think is quite stressed. La. Uh, it is the the case of like um, a man who allegedly confronts a mosque to complain about the prayer noise. <laughs> okay. Very stressed. <laughs> He's stressed. Yeah. He should have masturbated before he went there <laughs> because if he masturbated, he wouldn't have gone to the mosque. No, he didn't <laughs> or go maybe to the he was mosque. masturbating he didn't whilst go it to was. The mosque. He didn't go. He went down. Like I don't think he entered the mosque. He was, he just came out and said, "You all need to be." I thought he was. Uh, he he barged in, right? He barged in, but I don't think he was. Oh yeah, yeah correct. So you're saying before he went down to complain, lah. Yeah, if he masturbated at home, unless he was masturbating, then he started hearing <laughs> hearing the prayer, and then he thought like, "Shit, this is interfering in my." But I don't think so. Mm. In all seriousness, that's just speculation, lah. That's speculation, hundred percent. I think you see, if this guy were masturbating. He uh, would have fallen asleep immediately. I see. I see, I see. But then do you think that it is also because everyone's so cramped up together that, that they are stressed? I think this is really, you know, on the man's part, it's intolerance, la, you know. Intolerance? Yeah, I mean, he should have been more tolerant of the, the call to prayer. La. Call to prayer is call to prayer. La, you know? mm. Don't, don't, uh, a lot, I mean, the world is going through a lot of stress already. Then you go and go to the mosque and then you say like, the call to prayer is noisy. Yeah. Your father is noisy, lah. Okay, <laughs> you know when they are doing like the 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 come on. How many times when it's Chinese New Year, then there's the the what is that dragon? No, the lion dance. Oh, lion dance. Right. Yeah. I think the lion dance is ching ching chong ching ching. Then then how? But the but lion... it's noisy, you know. Even for us. But what do we say? No, we are tolerant. It's your festival. Enjoy. Yeah. Like and who's lion. inside that lion? Indian people. <laughs> is it? No, there are some Indians also. <laughs> Once I saw an Indian guy wearing the lions. <laughs> uh, he said he's Simba la then, Simba. <laughs> no, I mean, like this one. So the, the thing is, okay, I didn't mean to say Ching Ching Chong. That was not racist. It's just the sound that it makes, okay? Uh, I just have to clarify I before people Dong go. Dong Cheng? Dong Dong Cheng is what it was, yes. Dong Dong, Dong, Dong yeah. Cheng. Dong Dong Cheng. So, I mean, in this case, like, I, I, I don't know whether like the one, one masturbation a day would solve all problems, but I think... But it, it would solve... 90% of problems. <laughs> Had this guy been masturbating, he would not have gone down to the mosque to complain. I can assure you that. Because you see, there's, there's no, he's Chinese, right? Uh, I... I think he's Chinese. He looked Chinese from the back. No Indian person was going to go and complain because they're already drinking and, and sleeping. Mm, mm, right? Mm. Indians won't complain about these things. You sure not? Come on, la. we are the ones who make the most noise during Taipusum. That's why we have a whole street to ourselves. Uh-huh. Right? 
Yeah, we but love Bangra also, Dole, everything. Now also there's a there's a sound limit, right? the noise limit, right? I don't know why that is also. Let them enjoy. Mm, That's mm, why you mm. keep controlling everything. People are stressed. Everything uh. also control, 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 control. Uh. Like you want Singapore to become like a quiet city, is it? Like everybody shut up. You sign language, is it? No, but when they, but that's why Singapore maybe the 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 goal is at certain times the whole country is noisy like Taylor Swift lah. Oh yeah, Taylor Swift nobody said anything because money was coming in. Yeah, yeah, correct. But also because got no houses like directly next to National Stadium. Oh no, had you know how many of my friends who stayed in the east they just uh. put like um, uh I think it was Costaru. Uh. They had like they put chairs or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were just watching it from their balcony. They're watching Taylor Swift. But concert. they can they can hear just the faint. Yeah, but for like. them it's enough. Singaporeans will take anything they can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's a nice view, also lah, where they stay. Absolutely. Tanjung Road, which, which there's a bunch of BTOs coming up there, also. So if it's noisy, then how? Who's gonna? Who's gonna? Will you really walk up to the Taylor Swift concert and say, "Please tell Taylor Swift to keep quiet"? Here, just because Allah is like. <laughs> on the loudspeaker, you are you think you can walk up with the like the mosque and you just. But I mean, the the one thing is we don't know we don't know how how loud it was. See, honestly, even in India, this mm. happens. Mm. Like you know, there's a mosque in every area, and at at in the early morning or in the night, they will do the call to prayer. And at Arab Street, when we are there, we're doing stand up. There's so many times when we're doing stand up, and the call to prayer happens, and we all just keep quiet, mm. respectfully. Mm. And after that, we carry on with our dirty jokes, okay? Mm. But for that time, we respect the call to prayer, and we, you know, we 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 know that we if if we want to respect that there are four religions or four races, lot religions, four races in this country, then we have to be tolerant of everybody. Mm. You know, yeah, lah. There's so many things that we could be complaining about, mm. like the burning of the smoke during Hungry Ghost Festival, mm. like chokes my throat. But I'm like, mm, maybe your ancestor is happy. Yes, ancestors. Also, have... you 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 don't think that that can be curtailed a bit, uh? The the burning of the. I think okay lah. You see, because I'm tolerant, I hope that they are also tolerant, mm. right? Mm. So because I'm being tolerant and saying, I know this is your practice, your cultural practice. Please do it. I understand. So you show the same, same like reciprocal. Do you think? Uh? Do you think it's imbalance or balance? I think of course it's imbalanced. Mm. Like what do you wear? Like any any. Thing that you think is a imbalance, like yeah, I think for Thai person they should should they should allow people to have more drums, you know, mm. you know, pray loudly. I mean, if Singapore is so heavily into feng shui, they should know that when Thai person when they are praying loudly, they're bringing a lot of good energy and money for Singapore. You know, mm. just want to let them know. <laughs> <laughs> The money might not be directly through Thai person, like it'll be could be in the form through of the Taylor god, Swift. Like, yeah, exactly. Maybe Taylor Swift tomorrow just says that, you know. I grew up in Little India. Then things are going to change. Mm. She said, I experienced Thai Pusam. That's it. So Thai Pusam all the way. La. Yeah, it and will be Thai Pusam with a national Edwin event. Will be co- wearing the, the, the Kavadi, you know. If he does, I will pay to watch that. <laughs> if he, you know how much money I will pay. Uh. Yeah. Uh, but but I mean so so in this case, yeah, la, like just looking at it at face value, this incident, yeah, la, it's, it's ugly la, to go down and complain. Because we don't know what time it is. Uh, we don't know how loud it was, but I can't imagine it being that loud. Like, if you sit this guy down, I can tell you he was repressed. Not really. Yeah. 100%. Maybe repressed in through other means. No. Maybe not just sexually. It's mostly sexually. Mostly sexually. Have you That's done any same. studies about this? Or not? I have done an intuitive study. <laughs> uh, I feel this, la. I feel this. You feel this. But is this something you talk to your friends about? Always. All the time. Like how? You know, like sometimes you're going through a very tough day and then I tell my friends like, you know, my friend comes back home. She's she's like, I'm so tired from work. My husband's doing this. My kids are doing this. I don't know what to do. I think I'm about to have a breakdown. I'm like, hang on, masturbate. And then? And then we'll talk after five minutes. Yeah. She comes back. She's like, you know, I feel much better. Really? Yeah. I feel much better. And calmer. you have enough like case studies. I have enough friends <laughs> who have whom I have suggested this to. Uh-huh. Like, I swear if murderers no, no I can't go so far but like thefts thefts yeah the shop shop thefts no like shop thefts is I think the it's more money money in, like the, the main aim is money la. maybe they mm. don't have I think other things like you know anger oh you know like clubs people get angry like there are only three reasons why fights break out right mm. one is like why you look at my woman it's so common mm. why are you looking at me right uh, and the third? <laughs> third is uh, third is uh, why are you not looking at me? 
no, why why never take the drink I gave you or something? Uh. Or like you are from a different gang. Mm. You know, it's all about aggression and testosterone. So they want so, so, someone to come in, stop. And someone says, first. yes. <laughs> <laughs> like if if they got enough attention, you know, so many people fight over women in clubs. But you mean women don't fight over men? No, we don't. When was the last time we saw a cat fight? Women don't like are not on top of each other because of one guy. Never. Really? If they really are, it's like one out of a hundred. Uh. Uh. And that too also like. Maybe they are repressed. That they don't even feel they can fight in public. Women in Singapore just want to be treated with respect. Mm. They just don't. We, we just don't. That's why we're not having children for a reason, you know, in this country. Because mm. you have a child, you go back to the workforce. Are, is, you know, are, first of all, are we going get, to uh, get the same job or not? Mm. You know, are we going to be hired again? Uh, will we be allowed to go back to the workforce? Are there equal opportunities for us? Mm. You know, it's so expensive in this country to to sort of, you know, both have to work. So the woman is now stressed that she has, doesn't she doesn't know whether she's going to get a job. Then if she goes back to the job, is she, how is she going to be treated? You know, she wants to take care of her kids. She has to get a maid. You know, there's so many things to think about. So when you see the stat of a recent study that said that about 60% of men mm. feel that this whole push for gender equality is discriminating men. No? Yeah. What do you feel? I feel that they're stupid. <laughs> I feel that they are but the it, stupidest bunch. That's 60% of Singapore men. No? But that was a still from a small crowd, no. Yeah. All stupid. But that's like maybe, I think it was a 1,000 to 3,000 people. 60%. There can be 3,000 stupid people in Singapore. Uh, they're all there. And they all happen to just take the survey. Yes. Uh, because obviously, what they they are they are so they're so self absorbed. They don't they don't not think about anybody else but themselves. But don't you think we thrive? Our patriarchy yeah. in Singapore is thriving. You know that, right? It's a patriarchal society. Mm. You don't this, think like the it's getting like more progressive? Maybe in the banking industry. Mm. I have seen my friends in the banking industry. They come back to me and they say, "Charles, we have." you know, equal opportunities. Mm. We're getting hired. We're getting promoted. I have heard such good experiences from people in DBS. Great stuff. But like, otherwise, no. There's so many industries that are suffering, mm. you know, and forget that, you know, even in the office environment, sometimes the way they get spoken to, uh, you know, it, it's quite, it, it's quite demeaning. La. It's not, it's not a very great experience. But do you think like that is reflective of all men in Singapore? No, it's not. Of course not. Mm, there yeah. are good men in Singapore. There are men who sort of respect women and they know that there must be equal opportunities. But there aren't enough, mm. is what I'm saying. Mm. Like, I think that there needs to be a shift in mindset so that guys go, okay, my wife uh, wants to have a career. This is my career. we got to sit down and see how we can have a baby. Uh, but then you see, in, uh, even organizations need to change, right? You know, there, there aren't even uh, enough female bosses. How many women are there in parliament now? We need to set set example, right? How many yeah. are there? The, yeah, definitely and less. They la, all, less and they the all men. they all are very, you know, they all have short hair. <laughs> right? Except a few. Uh-huh. Uh uh-huh. you know, they all are everybody is fit in that box. Mm. You know? Mm. -mm. That why aren't we embracing our femininity and getting more women in, in so parliament? Then, then how? Because I mean, this is something that also like um yeah like, like I I still feel that certain things yeah is is not the the most equal is not the most fair yeah, there is discrimination, yeah. but then how do you just from the perspective of uh, a lady who speaks out about this a lot right how do you balance the fact of like uh just uh, getting people in for the sake of getting people in be it like race gender uh ethnicity whatnot like how, how to, you, like tokenism lah yeah tokenism okay. or the I, whole affirmative action thing. See, I think that um, I think that people use that tokenism thing when they are using it as an excuse not to promote a woman because then that's saying that that person doesn't have an ability to be at on that post or they don't have that that uh, the skill set to do mm. that that job. But when you're not going to give opportunities, when you're not going to give them, uh, um, you know, uh, the experience, they're not going to learn. Same thing with the, the comedy scene in Singapore, mm. right? Stand-up comedy scene in Singapore. There's some nights you will go and most of them are men on on, on the lineup. Mm. I'm the only uh, female or then if I'm not in, in town, someone else is there. So women are running their own nights. Mm. So when you talk to some people, some people get very defensive. No, we are doing it. But they don't have a strong five-minute set. I don't see them hustling. 
bro, if you don't give them that experience, they will not hustle. If you don't change the culture at the back end, where like guys are standing around and they're only cracking male jokes and the energy is so masculine, the girl comes off and she's like, oh my God, are they, they talking shit about me because I had a bad set? Who, who I mean, when you mm. don't give that, they're not going to grow. Mm. So there is that whole thing of like, uh, but you know, but other male, younger male comedians are also, they also want the spot, but they're like, why are you giving it to the female uh, first? No, because there aren't enough women, mm. you know, because you don't want them to grow. Mm. I mean, not that, not, not, not like purposely, lah, but you're not helping them grow. But like, uh, but have you seen it like in other countries where you're performing or where pe- the, the, the environments there are a bit more conducive or, uh, or more along the lines of what you imagine? Mm. I've seen cities, yeah. Mm. I've seen... Even uh, for stand-up, I mean. Oh, stand-up? Yeah. Everywhere. Mm. Mostly everywhere is the same. Mm. You know, for women. I think the US is getting slightly better because it's a mature industry. The UK even better because mature industry. But still women, if you speak to them, they're like, gosh, I had to work harder. Ten times harder than the men to be where I am. Mm. So then, like... uh. Just just to play like devil's advocate, you know, where do you think the whole thing about NS sits in this whole thing? Or you think that one is just everybody should just shut up about men having to do NS in Singapore? That is what the government wants. Mm. It's nothing to do with female or male. If you don't want to do NS, talk to the government. But, the day they make it compulsory for yeah. women, we will do it. But like right now for a guy who doesn't want to do it, they can't just talk to the government. Right? They can't. So yeah. that is the problem that they should talk to the government because tomorrow yeah. if we get invaded, they, I don't know, I think the government thinks that they will call all these um, NS men back and mm. they will come, which is quite funny, I think. Mm. I mean, because if you're in Singapore, you... I don't think many people will come back. Because so where would you go? Singapore's just, so small. I know, exactly. But I don't think everybody is going to like, you, you call them back and they're like, sorry, sir, my family, my, my mother is crying. She said, don't go to the... I mean, it's a real thing, yeah. right? It's a real struggle. You are training them so that they should be, that they should be fit, mm. that they should know how to protect the country and, and all those skills are good for, for the men in the country. I think mm. they are fantastic. But the day you say women should do it compulsory, women also will do it. Mm. it's not something that the women have said I don't want to do it but you think uh, there will be pushback against it of course there will be initial pushback yeah. but you have to do it you, if you if you want it equality but then so do you think the fact that NS is there already kind of changes the, the balance that by having NS there you can understand why a guy would say yeah I'm already doing my part yeah uh, and that's why maybe they feel that okay there's been some progress hopefully in terms of women's rights but for men the NS thing is a non so it almost starting off already is you feel your disadvantage la. see the thing is when you give birth to a child what they don't understand is your body changes yeah. your mood changes your life changes and it's a permanent thing mm. two years of NS will never compensate that mm. for women mm. so that is like doing 15 years of NS worse than that till your your you you know your and it, like maybe 18 years when people go to college or the university. Mm. See, that is not a compensation at all. Mm. So this is where like I feel like they're stupid because it's like you wasted two years. She's she's giving up her whole life, you know. Because mm. mostly when a child is born, the woman has at least 70-80% uh, hold of the baby because of physical needs. Yeah, Breastfeeding, yeah. taking mm. care of the child, holding on to the kid for the first two, three years. That's what happens. Mm. So you can't, you can't like compare like that. But then the, the thing is now, you know, Ultimately, Singapore is the only country that, I mean, one of the few countries that has conscription, right? Mm. And, and I'm not trying to just just say I disagree with you. Uh, mm. But because, like, when we, we covered the issue about the survey, right, 60% of the men mm. feel that, trying to understand why people might feel that way. And it is a thing in Singapore that other countries don't have. La. Correct. So if there's all this talk about gender equality in other countries where there's no conscription and already um, it feels like, oh, that is a stronger case there for gender equality. Singapore, it almost feels like, oh, but Singapore men are already doing NS. Correct. Yeah. So so do you think that doesn't factor at all? I don't think it factors at all. Mm. Because they are, they are comparing giving birth to spending two years in becoming a fitter man, a disciplined man, and a man who knows how to protect his country. Not everybody goes through NS coming out of it. <laughs> I know, like, not everybody. I know yeah. some people go through bullying as well. And yeah. I, and I, you know, I sympathize. Mm. But that's, don't, don't like blame the women for what the government has put on you. Mm. This is the government's decision. 
women didn't stand up and say we don't want to do ns women didn't say no and that's why the government did it to you ask the government i mm. mean you that's why you can't like compare you see but a lot of things that kind of uh disadvantage women are also government policies so. oh, of course right. yeah they are so that means it shouldn't be against the men lah uh not necessarily no mm. because uh, ideas some of the set ideas because you're living with around men and and you know uh, some of the ideas that are really instilled in society are through patriarchy that are passed down generations mm. the people who are in government are also men the ones who are making these rules are also men mm. so that's why i need more women in, in parliament, parliament mm. so that there are some there are fair you know kind of rules and regulations and and you know leeways made for both men and women so mm. they both can thrive it's so not and, like and you think singapore the patriarchy is getting stronger I think it's very strong. If you, if I mean, if the government keeps looking back and saying, which is why I always say, you know, you say, oh, paternal leave is going to make it better. No, no man is thinking sitting in the office going, oh, paternal leave, two more days I can stay at home. Okay lah, have a baby. Hmm. I mean, nobody's saying that. What? Or nobody like, oh, baby bonus ah. Wow, more money coming. Okay lah, have a baby. No what? But it might make it. Uh, you know less... what would make it great is if you actually put two days off off for you to have sex with your wife. Every week, not every week. Like. Oh, you mean just like like once a once a month? You should be allowed two days, and you should be like, okay, I need to. I'm I'm planning for a baby. I need time. It's a stressful environment. Can I please go off for baby planning? Uh? For baby planning. But then how you prevent abuse of that? You can't lah. Even NS people say that I break my leg lah. I break my neck lah. Uh, my cock break. This break. That break. Then you also get out of it. Uh huh. But you you have to figure it out lah. So I feel you can prepare a whole white paper on how every like all these sex related things can really help Singapore. Do you know, love and sex uh-huh. and money are three things that really drive any country. Yeah. We are lacking in one, two. Love and sex. Love and sex. We are only going for so money. So Singapore no love also. Love, where, where, where is the love? You only find love at East Coast Park where people uh, put the tent. You know when they are when the they glamping, are the uh, glamping when they are proposing to their girlfriends. Mm. Then you'll be like, oh my god, this is so nice. And then the reason why they would have done that is because they just got HDB or the BTO lah. The BTO. Then uh. love where in the pantat? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But like so, so generally, are you optimistic about Singapore or pessimistic? I'm very optimistic. Yeah. Considering. That they change certain things around here, because uh, if not, it's already getting hot. Yeah, our clothes are dry, our pussies are dry, <laughs> everything is dry. Brilliant! Is that is that like a big angle for your upcoming stand up? Absolutely not. Oh no! <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing about that is is in. You know. I might talk about it now that you're saying uh, about yeah, but everything is dry. Everything's dry. Nothing is wet. That can be the name of your next stand up, also. Everything's dry. Everything is dry. Yeah. Uh, do you hate it when people try and name your stand up? Absolutely not, lah. Yeah. I mean, although I named one of my my first stand up after a, a ST reviewer's insult mm. to my joke, call me a potty mouth. Come oh, on, no, you've no, been no. sitting with me for an oh, hour. Yeah, yeah, no, do you no, think no, I'm no. a potty mouth? No. Okay, great. There oh, you go. Yeah, 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 you're a potty mouth. Yeah. 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 You have just interesting thoughts, yeah. which is why we got we got you on. Uh, so so actually, we haven't mentioned like where exactly people can go to get your tickets to your show. Ticketmaster. dot uh, sg. Ticketmaster. If you can remember, think master. Not ticketmistress. dot com. <laughs> no, ticketmaster. Uh, ticketmaster. Okay. Ticketmaster. dot sg. Just put their middle child. Come for the show. Mm. And I don't know how many of you all are gonna hear this, but even if one of you all heard this podcast, thanks, Cheryl. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Cheryl. Buy the ticket. Ah oh, okay okay. I mean, listen to the podcast as well. I really like the podcast. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. And where can people find you on like in- Instagram, TikTok, and all? It's at the Cheryl Chana, mm-hmm. and TikTok is if it survives, still at the Cheryl Chana. It should still survive for the rest of the world, like just not the US. I don't know. Oh yeah, for Singapore it will because uh, the CEO is, CEO is Singaporean, Singaporean, right? Yeah. yeah, then it'll survive. Like, for Singapore, survive. only Singaporeans will watch it. Yeah, only Singaporeans. Mm. The rest and... all want to ban it. Don't know why. So it's fun, you know, TikTok. Yeah, it is. It's very trashy and very fun. I love it. Yeah, I can see its value. Oh, the I wouldn't say I love it, lah. You know what it is? Have you ever gone to the live section of any TikTok? Yes. Have you watched people having a chat from their houses, like two different places, especially like? I haven't seen that. The live that I see all in my feed is fucking ridiculous shit, lah. Oh, oh my god! You have, oh you you don't know? I I watch a helper from say one part of Singapore. Talking to a worker from another part of Singapore, mm. just lying down and having a romantic conversation, 
is so nice to hear. Oh, really? It's, it's so beautiful. Yes. It's on oh. TikTok. And they, oh. just, they just have this gift thing so you can gift them. But I think they're just talking. Next time you see that, just send it to me. Dude, I could go now. They, there's probably one of them talking right now and the employer doesn't know. No, it's okay. La. The employer doesn't know. It's okay. But like live. Okay, I'll show you this. Probably It's okay. It's okay. You can send me later. No, no. We ah. still got one more segment. Sharul. Oh, shit. I'm going to go for it. The one show thing. Oh, one they, maybe that can be your one show thing. La. Okay, one show thing is, yes, yeah. my one show. Okay, are you going to yes, ask me? Yeah, yeah. What, what is your one show thing, Sharul? My we one show thing is, um, okay, my one show thing is I like to watch workers and mates uh, or helpers live on TikTok uh-huh. having romantic conversations. And it's right here. And is that live? That is live. So like, what is the link we put in the show notes? Because we need to be able to to share it with our fans and listeners. Okay, then in that case, just have Komla Vilas. Komla Vilas is really <laughs> Go good food. Uh-huh. And I had like, uh, and they are introducing Batura soon. So they don't I, have Batura yet? Uh, no, they're bringing back Batura, yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, beautiful. It really went good away food. for a while, is it the Batura? Yeah, 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 and it's back. Really? I love, yes, Komla Vilas has opened a new outlet uh, at uh, 215 up Serangoon Road, I think. They have, they have two outlets. So one is mm. on the main road, one is opening the other side. I see, I see. Yeah. So we, if there was one one that you would recommend, which or the other? Actually, I'll go to the new one because mm. the old one is always busy. There's a line outside all the time. So mm. I prefer to walk down and go to the new one because it's got uh, some space. I see. And the new one is where again? Uh, it's uh, 215 Serangoon Road. Can, can we search that or not? 215 Serangoon Road. Huh? Uh, Komala Villas. Komala Villas. Seventy six, seven eight, Serangoon. We'll put it in the show notes, lah. Yeah, the new one, the new, the new one. one. Go okay, for the okay. new one. The new one. Okay, can. Also, my sister's married to the owner. Just wanted. To... <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, but that's on a side note, lah. That one you don't put in. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, just promote the food. Yeah. The okay, we'll put a link to the new one. To the Thank new you one. so much. Cool. Okay, so uh, my my one shook thing is a is a is a YouTube channel that yeah. I recently came across. Yeah. It is called uh the tag the. Handle is House by G, uh, and uh, account name is Georgine Low. So basically, he does like very aesthetically pleasing videos of like day in my life, like in Singapore. I don't know what he does. I think he's a freelancer. He's just made like uh, eleven videos, but he has a pretty sweet house setup, and he just does like unboxing and like like his his day in life. But it's very very aesthetically pleasing. Then he rides a cool bike. And I just came across, I'm like, hey, shit, I didn't know got creators like this in Singapore. Lah. So, Georgine Low, House by G on YouTube. Oh, Yeah, it's House a new channel, G. House by G. So, same thing, we'll put that link in the show notes. Perfect. Uh, along with the links to everything we have discussed, including the Ticketmaster.sg yep. slash middle child. Yeah, I, I don't think it's much longer. You just put that Ticketmaster, just go to Ticketmaster and just say, just write there middle child, okay? Oh, you never change the domain to be slash middle child or something. It does have something like this longer, la, you know? Don't waste so. your time. So go there. We'll just put a link in the show notes. Just, la. yes, please. Okay, awesome. Uh, but yeah. Was this like recorded, like video recorded also? Yeah. Okay. It was video recorded. That's what the cameras over there do, Cheryl. I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thanks so much for coming, Cheryl. Thanks for having me. I hope you, yeah. We hope I what? Hope you put in that everybody should masturbate once a day. Uh, you have said it enough times already. Okay, great. Yeah, cool. Uh, and to everyone listening, thank you all so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you all soon.